The Dark Hearts is a new necromancy mod for Skyrim Special Edition, which adds the most diverse range of minions I've ever seen in a Skyrim mod. Most mods deal mostly in skeletons, but this mod deals in skeletons, Draugr and spirits, as well as reanimations. On top of all this, it also has a well-established crafting and roleplay aspect, requiring you to dissect corpses and study them as well as find and create the ingredients necessary for the rituals. Please keep in mind that this mod is only available for Special Edition. Using it in vanilla Skyrim will probably cause problems. It's also important to mention that the Dark Hearts has been designed to work with most of the other nice necromancy mods. It's compatible with Ordinator, Purgus Maximus, Path of Sorcery, Undeath, and even more. I would highly recommend using it with Ordinator, Percus Maximus, or Path of Sorcery though, because of some of the limitations in this mod. I'll go into more on that later. For this video I decided to use the Dark Arts along with Percus Maximus. When you start a new character with the mod installed, you'll find a necromancy book in your inventory. It can be carried like a shield, and equipping it will open the book. Reading it will get you on the path to necromancy. Accessing corpses in sneak mode and then clicking the Dark Arts will bring up the Dark Arts abilities and level up your necromancy skill. Every 25 levels or so, you can read the next chapter in the book and learn new abilities. There are three categories of minions in the mod. Skeletal, Corporal and Incorporal. Depending on the biological sex of the corpse, different minions will be available. More on that later. The first minion in the skeletal category is the humble skeleton. The skeleton is relatively inexpensive to make and is also a versatile fighter. He's got both a melee weapon and a bow and uses the bow when at a distance, then transitions to the melee weapon once the enemy gets close. Next up is the corrupted shade, which is a very awesome looking minion. It floats into battle with a two-handed sword and does decent damage. The main problem is that it's a bit fragile, but that's the problem afflicting all of the minions in this mod. More on that later. Following the corrupted shade is the Bone Man, who has a similar aesthetic except has blue eyes instead of red eyes, and also has a pair of legs. Like the shade, he runs into battle with a big sword, and deals decent damage but falls over pretty quickly. The Mist Man is another skeleton, similar to the shade, but it's unarmed and it swipes at enemies with its claws. The Rathman is a large and heavily armoured bone man with a big axe. He deals satisfying damage and is perhaps comparable to a Draugr Deathlord, minus the shouts. Finally we have the Keeper, which is the coolest looking minion in the skeletal category. It's a very large skeleton warrior with dragon bone armour and weaponry, and he hits like a truck. His head is like a dark cloud with two eyes that look a bit like stars. It's pretty hard to beat the awesome factor of the Keeper. I don't know if this is an enemy from one of Skyrim's DLCs or if it's a custom made asset, but it sure is awesome. I like it a lot. The first minion in the Corporal category is the Wormthrow, which is a very versatile minion as you're about to see. When you kill an enemy creature you can dissect it and study its corpse, then write down notes about it in your necromancy book. You have three slots in this book. When you want to make a worm thrall, you can choose one of the notes you've written and it will spawn a zombie thrall of that type. For example, in my book I've studied a giant, so when I use the worm thrall with this slot, I will get a zombie giant. If I choose this other slot instead, I get a zombie wolf. This seems to work for any creature, but there might be some limitations. It might not work on a boss or a dragon, you'll have to experiment. The fighting prowess of the Frau depends on the notes in your book. The necromancy level may also contribute, I'm not sure on that though. My zombie giant is pretty strong, but he suffers from the stupid AI of a giant and chooses to swipe at the enemy instead of send him to the moon with that big hammer. There's four kinds of Draugr you can make. The Draugr, Restless Draugr, Draugr White, Hawking Draugr and Draugr Deathlord. They all look the same but they certainly differ in their combat prowess. The Draugr are versatile and are fond of using both a bow and a melee weapon in combat. The better varieties of Draugr may use shouts or magic, but I haven't seen this myself, 
Perhaps it's still in the works. The final minion in the corporal category is the Ash Spawn. These guys are fire based and have fiery weapons. If you want a minion that deals fire damage, get one of these. They look pretty cool as well. For male corpses, the Briar Heart minion is also available. He's missing the opening where the heart got extracted though. That's probably because us necromancers are better surgeons than those hag ravens. The Bryheart minion that I made was initially naked, but had all of his equipment in his inventory. The moment combat began, he quickly got dressed. Finally, we come to the incorporeal category, which has all the spirit minions in it, which will make a lot of necromancers very happy. The first of these is the Spectral Draugr, which is, unsurprisingly, a ghostly Draugr. It also behaves like a Draugr, using a combination of bow and melee attacks. It does seem to be a bit weaker than the real Draugr though, as far as I can tell. It's also cheaper to make because a gem isn't required. The Spectral Frowl is one I haven't been able to figure out. It's available to corpses of either gender, and seems to expect some kind of book entry, but I don't know how to fill the entries for Spectral Frowls. There are instructions on the mod page though if you're interested. For female corpses, the Wisp is available. The Wisp is one of those things you normally find swirling around a Wisp Mother. The most satisfying thing about it is its combat initiative. It doesn't hang back like other minions, it swoops right in there and steps up to their faces. Also for female corpses, the Wisp Mother is available. She's good but not as good as the Wisp Mothers you find in the wild. Unfortunately she hasn't got that swarm of Wisps flying around her. She's really cautious and likes to hang way back throwing the occasional ice bolt. If she had that wisp swarm around her, she'd be a lot better. But even as she is, she's a decent ranged unit, and she also looks very nice. For male corpses, you can get the subjugated ghost. This makes a ghostly dude with some decent equipment who fights in melee. He's a pretty good soldier, and he likes to moan and whine about his imprisonment. He seems to only ever spawn with melee weaponry, not ranged weaponry. Also for male corpses is the Headless Horseman. He's a bit like the subjugated ghost, but he's got no head, and he's also a lot more consigned to his fate. Instead of begging to be released and freed like the subjugated ghost, the Headless Horseman likes to taunt the living. The Headless Horseman is my favourite spirit unit, and he also seems to be the most effective one. He spawns in with heavy equipment always, and a two-handed weapon. In addition to everything I've already covered, there's two other nice features in the mod. Resurrect and Undead Thrall. You can feed charged black soul gems to your necromancy book, which allows it to do these spells. Resurrect is an in-game way of resurrecting a dead NPC. A bit like if you opened Terminal and clicked a dead NPC and wrote the command to resurrect him. Undead Thrall is like receiving a permanent Thrall minion which might be good if you find a really good, strong enemy NPC, and you want him as a minion. As you continue to level up your necromancy skill, you get helper spells. One of these spells is one that summons all your minions to you, which is handy because they struggle to navigate complicated terrain. The funny thing though is it summons all your minions, even the dead ones. So when you use the spell, you'll find yourself standing on a mountain of corpses, one for every dark arts minion you ever made. They can probably be revived somehow, I'm not sure how though. There's also a mechanic to dispose of corpses, and this removes them from that pool of undead. Earlier I recommended that you use this mod together with another mod, like Ordinator, Pocus Maximus, or Path of Sorcery. The reason for this is firstly, the minion limit in the Dark Arts, and also the quality of the minions themselves. In the Dark Arts you're limited to one minion, than an additional minion every 100 magicka points. This means you're going to be running around with only a few Dark Arts minions for a long time. The second reason is that the Dark Arts minions are quite fragile. They tend to die in a few hits, even to quite weak enemies. They're also expensive to replace. I'd recommend using one of the other mods to make a large, unlimited skeleton army, and then supplement this with the more interesting Dark Arts minions. Ordinator, Pergus Maximus, and Path of Sorcery all allow for an unlimited amount of skeletons, 
and they're also stronger and cheaper than the Dark Arts minions. Another problem with the mod is that the minion count appears to be lumped in with the standard summons limit. So if you have two Dark Arts minions summoned and you can't support another one, but you go and summon a timed fire Atron Arc or whatever using a standard conjuration spell, it'll kill off one of your minions to make room for it. This is pretty bad. I think the Dark Arts minion should be using a separate limit. This happened to me a few times, especially in the beginning, that I forgot about the limit and accidentally killed one of mine just to have a stupid timed wolf or whatever. Not nice, especially when you've spent emeralds and things on your minions. The crafting aspect is nice, but it's also somewhat of a double-edged sword. Although it is more complicated than other mods like Ordinator, Perkus Maximus, or Path of Sorcery, it is also less complicated than some other mods like Corpse Preparation. Dark Hearts sits somewhere in between. I personally don't find it too complicated. In my opinion, it's quite nice but it might be a turn-off for some other players who don't have the patience for it. My problem with the mod's crafting is that I find the effort and material cost of the minions produced to not be worth the end result. As I said earlier, I find the minions a bit too fragile. When you're investing in expensive gems and things into minions, they shouldn't drop dead after a few hits. I'm giving the Dark Arts a 7.8 out of 10. If the minions lose their fragility in future updates, I could give it full score in the useful minions category, and it'd get an 8.6 out of 10. If it also made minions more plentiful, it'd be approaching a 10 out of 10. It's a good mod and has a lot of potential to be even better. It's also fantastic how it works with the other big mods. This means there's really no downside to giving it a try. I didn't cover absolutely every aspect of this mod because this is already a very long video, what I have done is I've covered up to Necromancy level 50. Beyond that, I'm not sure what happens. There might be additional helper spells and maybe even other minions. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got more videos on Necromancy stuff coming soon.